Big Ultima energy. When a clapped out dented Ultima passes you on the shoulder going 40 over the speed limit in the rain. Big Ultima energy. When an uninsured Ultima driver on bald tires aggressively tailgates and honks and road rages in bumper to bumper traffic. Big Ultima energy. When an Ultima is on fire, the wheel is falling off and the oblivious driver passes you like absolutely nothing is wrong. I just bought this. Do I now have big ultimate energy? So just how did this practical mid-sized sedan get such a terrible reputation? It's easy to make broad generalizations about certain types of drivers. BMW drivers don't use their turn signals, Prius drivers are slow, men driving lifted trucks have small genitals. Okay, we all know that last one is true, but do those other stereotypes hold up to some scrutiny? Do all Ultima drivers show flagrant disregard for traffic laws? Are they all road raging assholes that will hit anything or anyone in their path? I didn't even know Big Ultima Energy was a thing until I discovered the Facebook group for this phenomenon. If you neglect your Ultima and have never done any basic maintenance, you might just have Big Ultima Energy. If you don't know that oil changes are a thing and you ignore all the warning lights on your dash, you might just have Big Ultima Energy. If you just took out a 96 month loan on a used Ultima, you might just have Big Ultima Energy. Now, this particular Altima might be an anomaly. Sure, the paint is destroyed, but the body is completely free from dents. There are no body panels missing. All of the wheels match. It doesn't have any tacky or offensive bumper stickers, and it's not currently on fire. And it has a manual transmission, which might actually make this Altima cool. Okay, so that's probably a stretch, but I couldn't in good conscience buy an Altima with a continuously variable transmission. They're not exactly known for their longevity. The first two generations of Altimas were fine automobiles, but they weren't good enough to compete with the Camrys and the Accords of the day. But that all changed when Nissan made a sweeping redesign of the Altima for 2002. This generation Altima was a huge deal for Nissan. It got rave reviews and quickly ascended to the top of Nissan's sales charts, turning the company around. This generation Altima is actually pretty reliable. No, they're not luxury cars, but they are honest, practical, useful transportation. And they even made an SER model, which was pretty quick and kind of fun to drive. But then things changed. Nissan started using their CVT in their cars. Reliability became a bit more questionable. Styling updates were a bit more awkward. And then for some reason, we began seeing more and more reports of dilapidated Altimas driven aggressively by maniacs. Is this really a thing? Are Altimas really involved in substantially more crashes than other vehicles? Or do we see a lot of smashed up Altimas just because Nissan sold a ton of them. If you look at lists of the most crash prone cars in the US, sure the Altima is up on the list, but so are just about all of the other top selling vehicles in the US, the Silverado, F-150, Accord, Camry, Civic. So it wouldn't seem that the Altima is significantly more prone to crashes than many other cars. Okay, so that doesn't really explain it. Maybe location is skewing the data just a bit. Altimas are very popular cars in the South, notably in Mississippi and Tennessee where Nissans are built. And as it turns out, Mississippi and Tennessee are home to some of the worst drivers in the US. Pairing Altimas with the nation's worst drivers, a recipe for big Altima energy. Some that subscribe to the theory of big Altima energy will direct your attention to subprime auto lending. Somewhere along the line, Nissan started letting people with lower and lower credit scores get loans for their cars. Buyers with bad and subprime credit will find it much easier to get approved for a loan at a Nissan dealership. Nissan Altima drivers have the third lowest average credit score out of all cars in 2021. Only the Chrysler 200 and Nissan Rogue Sport were worse. Yeah, people in 2021 were still paying off loans on their terrible Chrysler 200s. Yikes. If you pray at the altar of big Ultima energy, you might believe there's a correlation between buyers with bad credit and aggressive driving. And you'd find out there is actually some truth to that. Low credit scores can predict riskier driving behavior. In a study that analyzed telematics data, researchers found behaviors that are known to correlate with increased claims costs, hard braking and hard accelerating also correlate with insurers' pricing practices. Basically, lower credit scores can accurately predict insurance losses. Now, of course, you can't argue that if you're poor, you're automatically a terrible driver. Roads are often less safe and in worse condition in low-income neighborhoods. Low-income drivers can't often afford vehicles in good condition or afford to keep them maintained. And that might just explain the massive amount of Altimas we've seen driving around with body damage. Even if someone crashed into you and it wasn't your fault, you might not be able to get your car fixed. 
So I spent a good portion of this video trying to delve into the depths of big Ultima energy and try to figure out if it's a real thing. I do still think we're seeing a ton of busted up Ultimas driven by just because there are so many Altimas on the road. Chances are just way higher that you're going to see a terrible driver in an Altima than many other cars, simply because Nissan sold so many of these things. And there's plenty of other drivers of other cars that give off big Altima energy. When I was a kid, it was probably Pontiac Grand Ams. Today, it's usually Dodge Chargers and Infiniti G35s. I think maybe the most plausible theory behind the genesis of big Altima energy is the continuously variable transmission. If you like driving, a CVT sucks. And if you don't like driving, which we can assume many Altima drivers fall into this category, considering how much of a hurry they're always in, the CVT sucks for them too. It makes your crappy little engine sound like a lawnmower, it moans and whines like an ungrateful child, it never feels like it's allowing your car to make any meaningful forward momentum, and they tend to break on Altimas. Transmissions would jerk, cars would hesitate and stall, and eventually the transmission would fail. There were even class action lawsuits for their defective CVTs. Eventually the market got flooded with cheap Altimas, some fixed, some on their way to catastrophic failure. These used Altimas no longer possessed much intrinsic value, so second owners may not have had much incentive to care for them. The Altima CVT has brought enough negativity into this world to ensure big Altima energy exists for every Altima driver on the planet. But in the end, I'll stop trying to figure out how it exists and just embrace the big Altima energy. Oh, come on. You piece of shit. So you're probably asking yourself by now, why the hell would you buy this vehicle? Why would I subject myself to the ridicule that comes along with owning and driving an Altima? I bought it because this is one of the few Altimas I've ever seen that doesn't exhibit much big Altima energy at all. It's just a reliable beige car. The previous owner was a mom that never crashed into anything and did a fantastic job keeping up on maintenance. And it doesn't have a CVT. Okay, so this NOS steering wheel cover exhibits some big Altima energy. I guess it exists on every Altima at some level, but this is the lowest energy Altima I've ever seen. It drives fine, it has decent acceleration for a four cylinder, it's been reliable, it gets okay gas mileage. But honestly, one of the things that I love the most about this car is that you don't have to care about it. If anyone dents it or crashes into it or steals it, I just don't care. And that's where the big Altima energy creeps in. The Altima is a car for when you just don't care anymore. And maybe that's what makes the story of big Altima energy a bit sad. This car is not old enough for people to have nostalgia for it. It's at the bottom of the depreciation curve. You can get a running and driving Altima for less than $1,000. These cars get absolutely no love. People that own them don't care about them and drive them into the ground. People that don't drive them hate them and make fun of them. In some ways, I feel bad for the humble Altima. In 20 years, all of these Altimas we see will only be found in junkyards and we'll look back on a car that wasn't really all that bad. It was just practical transportation that never got any love and probably didn't get properly maintained. So honestly, I have no idea why I bought this vehicle and I should probably sell it now before I get permanently sucked into the big Ultima Energy Vortex, start driving like an and crash into multiple objects daily. Please subscribe if you like this video. I hope you're well and I'll see you soon. Oh.